Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on when you are watching this video. I want to introduce myself. My name is Esteban Monge. I am the work-based learning specialist here for the Grossmont Union High School District. Uh, I've been in this job for about just almost three years. Prior to coming into the district office, I worked for uh, I worked at Granite Hills High School for ten years, and there I taught sports medicine and biology. And before that, before I got into education. I was a certified athletic trainer uh, for 16 years, and some of that time overlapped with my time here at the high school, in the high school district. Those pictures you see on the right, um, that one here on the bottom right there, that was me this past June, um, where I hit a hole-in-one, first and probably only time that will ever happen. I've only been playing golf for about three years, so it was quite a big accomplishment. Um, and I like to brag with my father-in-law because he's been playing for 30 years and uh, he's never hit even close to holding one. So it's always fun to brag. So how many of you can think of a time from when you were graduating kindergarten like these two young young kids to now? How often or how many times has a grown-up or your friend asked you, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you say? For some of you, you might know the answer right off the top of your head. Some of you, maybe most of you, aren't sure what to say. Hopefully not many of you don't care and for those that maybe don't care hopefully by the end of this quick presentation you might find some guidance and maybe start to care a little bit because I'm sure there are some things that you really like to do and maybe you can combine those uh, to make money off of those things you enjoy doing so let's take a few minutes and introduce a concept called Ikigai which is a Japanese term for a reason for being Let's take a minute, watch this video, and then we'll come back. Should we focus on making more money? Should we focus on pursuing our passions? Should we give up all of our material possessions and become a monk in the mountains? Everyone seems to have a different take on it. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you a definite answer by showing you guys a proven formula that has actually been around for hundreds and hundreds of years, a formula for happiness. See, the Japanese have a concept called Ikigai, which roughly translates into a reason for being. And in order for you to be happy, you need to spend your time doing something with Ikigai. You need to have a purpose for being here. But this is easier said than done because there are four components that you need to check off in order to achieve Ikigai. And without all four, you will never truly be happy. The first component is that it needs to be something that you love. We all have things that make us feel good, things that make us stop thinking for short periods of time, to just be present and aware of what's happening right now in front of us. The more technical people will call this flow state, but the majority of us call it love. That's why so many of us enjoy the arts, drawing, dancing, singing, reading, because it takes us into this state of bliss where we feel good and are focused on the task in front of us. That's why some of us fall in love with one another because being with that person allows us to forget about all the other problems in our lives, at least momentarily. I don't need to get into too much detail about this component because we know in our gut when we truly love to do something. It's a feeling that we humans all share. The second component for Ikigai is a little bit more tricky. It needs to be something that the world needs. See, we We've been hardwired to feel good when we know that we're needed in a community. Back in the day when we were hunters and gatherers, this was easy. Everyone played an important part. The cook was just as important as the hunter. The builder was just as important as the caretaker. Back then, whenever you put in work, you could see the immediate positive effect your efforts had on others. But this isn't the case nowadays. Most of us work in offices, being given small roles in a massive company, where even if we work our butts off, it's hard to see the positive effect our work has on the rest of the world. It feels like our work isn't really helping anyone. It feels like if we quit our job one day, no one would even care because, to be honest, nothing would change. You need to find something that the world needs, something that you can do that will create a visible, positive effect on those around you. The third component for Ikigai is that it needs to be something that you can get paid well for. Now, I know, I know, right out the gate, some of you are automatically going to say something like, oh, improvement pill, you don't need money in order to be happy, but let's be real. Money is what puts a roof over your head, food in your mouth, and clothes on your body. Without enough of it, you're going to spend the majority of your time stressed out of your mind, wondering how you're going to get by. 
And it's not enough to just be making some money. You need to be getting paid well enough to live a comfortable life. So it really depends on where you live. For example, you could live like a king off of 30,000 USD a year in some countries, but in a place like New York City, that would barely be enough to cover your rent. If you're not making enough money to live without stress, then you will never achieve happiness. The fourth and final component you need to have in order to achieve Ikigai is that it needs to be something that you're good at. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to be born with talent. This actually means that you're able to put in the time and effort in order to get better at the skill. Let's say, for example, you want to become a motivational speaker. When you first get started, you're terrible. You have stage fright, you stutter a lot, you forget what you're supposed to say. But over time, as you practice more and more, you start to overcome these obstacles. You start getting applause from the audience. That's what it means to be good at something, not to be good from the get-go, but to be able to overcome obstacles and improve at this skill. This overcoming of obstacles creates a very fulfilling feeling inside of you, which is why it's such a crucial component of Ikigai. Now, the interesting thing about this Japanese formula is that you can tell where you are in life and what you need to work on by looking at the components you have so far. If all you have is something that you love and are good at, then you have what's called a passion. People who fall into this category are all the aspiring singers and aspiring artists. The main thing stopping you from being happy is the fact that you aren't getting paid enough for your skills. Nobody seems to notice your talent. If you find yourself in this category, then you need to focus on marketing yourself so that you can start getting paid well. On the other hand, if you have something that you love and you can see how the world needs it, then you have what's called a mission. A lot of people who fall into this category are the amateur bloggers and activists who talk about things like saving the planet or going vegan. These are people who want to see positive change in the world, but unfortunately, they aren't good enough at public speaking, persuasion, or writing to actually be able to convince people to join their cause. If you're in this category, then you need to focus on getting better at your craft, figuring out how to convince people instead of just stating your opinion loudly. Now, if you're someone who has something you get paid well for and are good at, then you have what most people in the world have, which is a profession. That boring 9 to 5 job that pays the bills. What's stopping you from happiness is the fact that you don't love your work or see how any of this can actually make a difference in the world. If you find yourself in this category, then you need to try out new things and figure out what it is that you truly love doing. And finally, if you get paid well and it's something that you know can help the world, then you have what's called a vocation. A good example of a vocation are professors. They get paid decently well and their job does have a positive effect on the world, right? They're raising the future generation. But they often fall into the bad habit of teaching the same things every single year, which stalls their improvement. If you find yourself in this category, the main thing you need to make sure you have is that you are constantly getting better at your job, constantly challenging yourself to improve. Remember guys, in order to be truly happy with your life, you need to achieve Ikigai. You need to be spending your time doing something that you love, that you can get better at, that pays well, and that the world needs. Without all four, you will always feel like you're missing something inside of you. So let's talk about these four concepts. What you love, what you're good at, what can be paid for, what the world needs. I'll go back to my example of my picture in my introduction, my hole-in-one. I love golf. I'm really passionate about it. And obviously, I'm good at it to be able to hit a hole in one, but I'm not exceptionally good at it where it can be, I can be paid for it. So it, it's not my profession. Does the world need professional golfers? Sure. They're a viable career paths. However, I personally don't have the skill set to be able to combine it and form my ikigai. In other words, I can't stop what I'm doing today, play golf every day, and be able to support my family doing so. So, for me, golf is just a passion. Take a couple minutes and I'm gonna read you this quote, Rob Bell. Your ikigai is a work in progress because you are at work, because you are a work in progress. Knowing your ikigai then takes patience and insight and courage and honesty. For me, I'm honest with myself about my skill level and my skill set. It takes a lot of time. You don't go from one day to the next being good at something. You have to build on the skills that you have. So think about this quote. Think about your ikigai. Maybe think about some of the things, identify some of the things that you love. Go ahead and take two minutes and discuss with your class or your neighbor.
welcome back. So for many of you, it's a lot to take in. And I'm sure two minutes is nowhere near enough time to figure it out. For some of you, you could be stuck in one of the circles or all four of the circles. But for a lot of you, you might be asking, what is it that I love? Now, we're not talking about a person, an object, or a thing necessarily, right? We're just talking about determining what our passion is. And most importantly, in order to answer that question, we really got to know ourselves. What are we good at? What are our strengths? What are our interests? What are our values? Now, for many of you, you've gotten to this point in your life with some form of values, right? There are some things you believe in, right? Whether it be right or wrong things you know interest you. And whether you know it or not, there are things that you're good at. Now, we got to know our options. What kind of problems do you want to solve one day? And then lastly, what careers are in that field? That's a deeper question. Because for many of you, you might only know careers that you've seen people do for a living. But I can assure you, there are so many jobs out there that you may have never heard of where people are making not only a decent living, they're doing what they love because there is a need for that. And that's where people can find their ikigai. So ask yourself, what do I love? What does the world need? What can I be paid for? What am I good at? You see, these two individuals here on the top is Alex Hanold. Now, Alex, as you can see, or maybe you can't see from that picture, he's climbing El Capitan, which is a 3, 000, over 3,000 foot vertical rock uh, at Yosemite. Now, I don't know if you can tell from that picture, but he's climbing it without any ropes. And you might say to yourself, wow, he's crazy, <laughs> right? But he's really passionate, obviously. He loves what he's doing. He's extremely skilled. But you might be saying, well, does the world need a rock climber? And can he be paid for doing this? What a lot of people don't realize is Alex actually is very passionate about environmental issues. So he goes around and speaks to groups of people to bring awareness to environmentalism. And he uses a lot of the funds, money he gets um, and donates it back to causes uh, to bring more awareness to something he's very passionate about. Alex was able to find his purpose, his ikigai, by doing what he loved, what he was good at, what he could be paid for, and what the world needed. And of course, many of you might know this name, Steve Jobs, but I'm sure all of you know what an Apple computer or an iPhone is. Steve Jobs would always say the only way to do great work is to love what you do. Clearly, an example of Ikigai and combi combining his skill, his talent, into finding a need for the world, which in his case was a need for personal computing. He was obviously very good at putting a team together to design these products. And clearly, he loved what he was doing and made quite a bit of money doing so. Here, in the Grossman Union High School District, we have a tool called Zello. And you can access it the same way you access your Google accounts when you sign into your Chromebooks. So I want to play a quick video here, um, which explains a little bit of not only um, the features within Zello, but how to log in. So when you go to your Google homepage, you have your various apps and things that might pop up down here. Now this is my Gmail account. I'm logged in, as you can see there. You guys are going to go ahead and log in. Go to this waffle little button here where you have all your Google apps. And for you guys, as you scroll down all the various apps you have, at the very bottom, you'll see the Zello tab. Go ahead and click on that, and that'll take you right to the landing page. We'll go ahead and watch this tutorial video which will explain a little bit more of what to do once you log into Zello. Let's get to know Zello's dashboard. 
This is the first page you'll land on after signing in and where you can quickly access key tasks to complete and features to explore. See all your lessons prioritized in order of importance, so you'll always know which ones to work on next. Track how many you've completed and how many you have left to go. Use the quick access links to get to your About Me page, where you build a personal profile with skills, interests, and experiences. Or click to get started on a Zello assessment like Matchmaker or Personality Styles. Once they're complete, use these links to revisit your results. Pop in to explore options to check out hundreds of careers and thousands of possible education pathways, or envision your future and goals and plans. Those assignments from your teacher? They're here too, with at-a-glance info like who assigned it and when it's due. This is also where you can check out any helpful links and resources they posted. To get back to your dashboard, click the Zello logo from any page. And that's your Zello dashboard. Quick and easy and designed to help you keep track of your top priorities. I know that's a lot to consider in a very short amount of time. But don't worry, we'll be coming back with part two in a few weeks for you guys to do some follow-up. But from now until then, check out Zello. Log in. Try to find your icky guy. And of course, if you don't know or you can't find it today, just know that it's a work in progress and it'll take time. Don't get frustrated. Um, there are many people around you that are willing and happy to help. Thanks. Have a good day.